Thank you all, but let's give Jesus the greatest praise. Come on and lift up your voice. Shabbat, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, he's worthy of the highest praise. Hallelujah, he will not receive anything less than the fullness of what we have for him, amen? Thank you, Lord. You may have your seats in the presence of our God. I give honor and glory to our God for what he is doing in the midst of our lives, and I believe that we're in the midst of our, the most exciting times that we've ever seen here at the Life Center, amen? amen. Hallelujah. I celebrate and honor Apostle Buddy and Dr. Mary Crum in their absence. I celebrate them as amazing leaders, pioneers in the faith, and I thank them for this opportunity to stand beside, behind this sacred pulpit to minister the word of the Lord this morning. I salute all of my fellow pastors, all the elders, everyone in their respective places, and I love to shout out this amazing woman of mine, Pastor Ayanna Giles. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord has been good to me. Amen. <laughs> Before we jump into the word, I just want to say thank you to everybody for all of the love that you've shown us over the last week as we celebrated our birthdays. Amen. We give God praise for the flock that just loves on pastors. Amen. We don't take it lightly. I was in Virginia a couple of months ago and I was speaking to a pastor who is pastoring one of the oldest African American churches in the state of Virginia. And he was giving God praise because the church he was at now, he said he had to pinch himself because he thought that it was fake. He thought he was being set up because he had been hurt by so many other churches in the past. And he, this is a man who has been in ministry as a pastor for 50 plus years. And he said, when you find a church that loves you, honor them because it doesn't come all the time. So I honor you. We, me and Pastor Ayana, we love you. And it is our pleasure to serve such an amazing group of people. Amen. If you will turn in your Bible to Exodus chapter 19, we're going to begin at verse 1, and we're going to do a little bit of reading this morning. I hope y'all know me by now. I am one who definitely has the Word of God as the backup. I don't want y'all saying that I made this stuff up. I put it before you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we honor you. We give you glory for who you are. We thank you for the authority of your great name. We thank you for the power of the name of Jesus that has opened up a way and access to us, that you are the high priest. And we thank you for being the, our intercessor, the one that goes in between, Lord God, on our behalf. We thank you for being our advocate, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the place that you pray and you cry out on the behalf of the believer that we would have the opportunity to engage with the Father. So we thank you that it's through the gate of that door, the name of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed that we pass through as righteous ones with clean hands and a pure heart. We thank you that we have the authority to ascend the hill of the Lord and stand in your holy place. And we ask you, O oh God, pour out your spirit in the midst of this place. Teach us as only you can. We ask you, counselor, come in this room, Holy Spirit, and open up the hearts and the minds of your people. Portals of revelation be cracked open in this place. We ask you, Lord God, to reveal what you desire for us to receive that we may move forward in the power and authority of your name. We give you honor and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And it reads, in the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt on the same day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai, for they had departed from Rephidim, had come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain, and Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. If you have your physical Bible, underline that. If you have a digital Bible, highlight myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure, underline special treasure to me, above all people, for all the earth is mine. We hear that as we sung that today. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. I want you to underline kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. When the Lord gives you a command, 
and he decrees something over you, there is a response that must come forth. I want y'all to pay attention to the order of how these things played out in the Bible. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Hallelujah. We are in the midst of an amazing time in this body as the Lord is transitioning his move and how he's bringing us into the place of how he's developed us out of the place of pioneering in one season into the next. We had the 80-30, we celebrated that amazing time, and even Dr. Mary said it was a celebration of one thing that had happened and a launching forth into a new thing that was to come. Most times what we find out in the body of Christ is that when God calls us to step into a new thing, it's usually on the sake of faith and faith alone, amen. He doesn't tell you the steps that you're going to have to take. He doesn't tell you the price that you're going to have to pay. He doesn't tell you how much consecration it's going to cost you. All he says is obey me. We're in a time concerning this house where the Lord is actually transitioning in us and preparing us for what is before us. And he's calling us to get ready because he's about to visit this house in a way that we have never seen it before. We are about to encounter the presence of God that's going to shake the very foundation of this building to the point that these walls will not be able to contain the glory that's going to be revealed. Why? Because it's time. Amen. There has been 30 years of pioneering, 30 years of prayer, 30 years of fasting, 30 years of prophesying. And God has appointed a time that he's ready to crack open the heavens over the life center and make sure that the fullness of the name that he proclaimed over this place manifests in the fullness of what it is. Meaning that this would be a house of life and nothing dead can remain in the midst of this building. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is about to return the days of awe and wonder to this house to the point that we would not be able to come in and, and be able to say that we had a regular church service all over again. That every time we come in, we come in running into the building because we want to encounter the God who's manifesting himself in unprecedented ways. There are miracles that have yet to be recorded in the midst of this building that he's going to do by the power and the might of his hand, not by somebody else's. He's going to do it himself. For the Lord is ready to walk through the aisles of this place, walk all over this pool, it, walk all through up and down the aisles and outside that when people pull up on the on the parking lot he's going to demonstrate himself because he will not have anybody taking the glory from him in this time it will be a place of habitation and we've said that term and the Lord gave it to us for us to put it as the place of prayer and it began to resonate with me over the last couple of weeks as the Lord began to prepare in my heart for me to understand that every single move that he begins to breathe in the earth comes on the wings of prayer. There is somebody that must pick up the yearning and the burden of the heart of him. That even to the point when Samuel needed to be birthed in the earth, he had to put a yearning inside of a heart of a woman that was barren. The Bible says that the Lord locked up her womb so that there could be the place where there was uh, uh, the birthing of something that had to come and bring transformation to an entire people. Understand what was going on at the time. You had Eli functioning and operating as the high priest in the midst of the people, and his sons were running amok. And there was a cry in the midst of the earth because there was profanity coming upon the name of the Lord because of the actions of those who were in power. And the cry that began to come from heaven as I begin to hear it this week is, where are the priests? Hallelujah. Where are those who are set apart? Where are those who have clean hands and a pure heart? Where are those that are willing to pay the price that they will lay down everything in order to make sure that the heart of the Father is pleased? Where are the set apart ones? The Lord began to cry. And there came the heart of a woman who began to cry out to God to the point that even the priest thought she was mad. Why are you on these steps murmuring and nothing coming out of your mouth? The anguish, I see it upon your face, but it looks like you're sitting here as a mime, as a mute, as one who cannot talk. Your anguish goes so deep and the cry of your heart is, Lord, have you forgotten about your maidservant? 
And in the midst of it, there became an opening where God said, ah, that's the womb I can birth something in the earth that has never been here before. That's the womb that I can call a prophet unto the people of Israel that will change and reform everything that has been about what they have known over the last lineage that has come before him. I can bring one who did not even deserve to be sitting in the place and rear him from a child and bringing him into the place where he's decreeing out of his mouth the word of the Lord at a young age and causing even the one that is in power the one that is sitting in the prime seat, the one that is sitting as the forerunner before him to quake at the sound of the voice of God coming out of his mouth. The Lord is changing the guard and he's looking for people who are ready to answer the cry of where are the priests? We're in an hour where the Lord is assessing us. He's looking at your development. How much do you look like me? How much do you sound like me? How much is of your nature is aligned with my nature? Do I see in you the light of my presence when I look upon you? Or do I see another form that's functioning inside of you? Is there another heart that's in you that I have not placed in you? Is there a stony heart? Is there one that is being choked out and that is dry? Or is there a heart that yearns for me? Is there a heart that beats after my presence? Is there a heart that is thirsty for the fragrance of my drink that comes unto them as the water of my word? Where is the priest? that cries out for the Lord to come unto them that they can receive the word that will bring reformation unto a people. He's looking for you. He's looking for you. We've been called to be a kingdom of priests. But the thing that I found to be very interesting is that in the New Testament expression, we don't find much language in the scripture, nor do we find much teaching in our present age about what it is to be a priest. We're sitting here in a place where there is the cry of David and they look at David as being a prophet, a king, and a priest. And we put a whole lot of weight on the prophet and we put a whole lot of weight on the king because we're trying to press into this apostolic age of really bringing forth the kingdom of God into the earth. But yet and still there is a, 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 a empty space. There is a vacancy when it comes to the priesthood. And we got people functioning in gifts, people functioning in authority. People calling on things that they haven't even fathomed in their mind prior to this time that they would call upon, but they do not have the priestly garment that is upon them, and so it's coming unto the Lord as strange fire. God is waiting, looking for people saying, where are the ones that will follow my pattern?" that will allow there to be a level of brokenness inside of them, that they would take on the heartbeat that I do no thing unless I see my father do it. I speak nothing unless I hear my father say it. I bring no glory unto myself, but everything I do is for the glory of the one who sent me. We see that there has been a, a, a massive assault upon the priesthood, upon the, the position of the priesthood, upon the place where it's the assignment and the seat from where God is going to reign as the Lord of glory, as the high priest eternal. And we see this assault that has come upon the body of Christ and even here upon the life center. And we see in the scriptures where it says over and over and over again that there has been negative effects where the heart of God cried out because of the offense of the priest in the midst of the body. Jeremiah 5.31 says, an astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule by their own power, and my people love to have it so. But what will you do in the end? When the word of God doesn't come to pass, when there is a breach when you need somebody that can get to heaven and their prayers can be responded to because they are a friend of God, but they cannot be found in that place because the Lord has this against them, whatever this may be. Ezekiel twenty-two twenty-six 26 says, her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between holy and unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the clean and the unclean. <clears throat> and they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath so that I am profaned among them. See, what we don't realize is that whenever us as those who are the body of Christ, those who claim to be Christians, and we function and we operate outside of the will of God, it's not about our image. 
It's the profanity that we bring against the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why when you got gospel artists and gospel singers that get caught up in all kind of scandals and reckless behavior, and then you find them trying to make excuses over and over again for the thing that they have done, they have done nothing but make an excuse for their ability to cause the name of the Lord to be diminished in the eyes of the people. And it causes the heart of God to be grieved. Hosea 6, 9 says, as bands of robbers lie in wait for a man, so the company of the priests murder on the way to Shechem. Surely they commit lewdness. You see priests that are functioning, men and women of God. And see, I'm about to mess with your whole theology because most of you think about those who are standing right here in the pulpit. But from the very beginning, as I read in Exodus, that when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said to the entire company of people, I want you to be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. So that's every single believer, every single one that is blood bought. He has called you to be a priest and of the order of the same one that he comes after. The Bible decrees that he is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And you are on the same order and of that same grave. Many of you, many of us over the years, we've looked at many leaders and all of the things that they've gone through and we've heaped up judgments and heaped up words of accusation and heaped up profanities against them in the sense that we've called them outside of their God-given character. Yeah, there's a difference because all of us have the ability to function in our character in the way that we want it to be. But when God begins to speak about who a man is or who a woman is by his mouth, he wants those who are righteous. That's why the Bible says, let them that are spiritual restore such a one that is fallen. Your mouth is never ever to be in a place where you bring ridicule and claim against that person. But it's the place where you speak to who they are by the spirit of God and you call them back into their rightful place. You begin to pick up the heart of an intercessor and you pick up the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ and you begin to cry out on the behalf of them until Christ be formed in them again. Jesus. Hallelujah. Understand that the priesthood has been under assault all the way to the point from the days of Eli's sons all the way through the ones who were the murderous ones that killed Jesus. Even beyond that to the ones that still remain in their places trying to kill the apostles to stop the voice of the gospel for advancing in the earth. It had to be a place where God said, you know what? I'm tired of there beginning to be profanity against a position that I'm going to uphold. So he said, let me come in the order of a priesthood so that I, as the Lord who will reign forever, can make it a resurrected place where it now takes on the name and the mindset and the nature in which I created to be in from the very beginning. Understand that Adam was ruling as a priest unto the earth. He had dominion. He ruled, and his thing was to bring the kingdom of God, the nature of God, into the earth unto every created being. But he allowed himself to be subjugated to another authority. Understand that Jesus has submitted himself even unto death at the hands of those that he came to die for and to be an example to how to walk in the fullness of the priesthood. But he allowed them to speak over him. Literally, he said, I give my life or I let no one take my life. I literally lay it down. He laid it down to a priesthood that was ungodly. A priesthood who was functioning counterclockwise to the thing that God created him for, but yet still they were doing the will of the Father. That's an oxymoron for you, isn't it? What happens when God allows there to be a twistedness in the midst of men's hearts so that he can bring change and reformation that will last for an eternity? See, when it talks about being set apart, when it talks about there being the alignment of a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, it speaks of the word Kodesh, sacred, set apart, saintly, holy, righteous. It's the same connotation that we get in Romans 12, 1, because I know all of y'all are like, okay, that's Old Testament, Pastor Samuel, we don't have any more priests in this age, got you. 
Romans 12, 1 says unto you, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you would present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Meaning that there is nothing else that you are to do above that. The whole premise from which priests were supposed to operate was everything in their world revolved around the worship of God. Everything in their world revolved around making sure that he was ministered to. A lot of us, we run to God for ministry, but we choose not to to run to him, to minister to him. That's the difference between one that will be a blip in time and another that will be mentioned for all eternity. What do I mean? Mary Magdalene chose to pour out the oil from her life. Literally, she was a prostitute that spent her days giving of her body and the money that she got from it, she bought this expensive ointment, this oil that was her life experience. Prior to her, res her, her place of being re resolved and re reconciled back unto God through salvation. But in the midst of that, she said, there's nothing. Nothing that I spent my entire life for that's too valuable to be poured out upon this man that has given me life, life more abundantly. There is nothing too weighty, nothing that is too great for me to give, whatever it costs. Matter of fact, prophetically, I know he's about to die. So I'm going to pour this oil upon him and I'm going to wipe it with my hair and my tears and the water and the oil is going to pour inside of him a fragrance that prepares him for his death. And the Bible says wherever the gospel is preached... Her name will be mentioned among it. God is looking for priests that will be in a place where they exceed the level of consecration that they've been upon because they know that the next level requires something greater than they've ever given before. Understand there is a place that when the people of Israel came out of Egypt, they needed a whole nother culture shift. All they knew was slavery. All they knew was what, was what it was to be in Egypt and to function according to the Egyptian way. Pharaoh was the man God in the midst of Egypt. Everything went through him. So their whole perspective was marred and bent and God had to come in and change everything about them. He literally said to them, I brought you out. I bore you on eagle's wings and I brought you unto myself. Now I'm changing your whole mindset because I'm taking you from one God and putting you in the mindset or in the framework of being encountered by a whole nother God of all creation. So I need you to understand that you need to walk with me in accordance with what I say to you. What they did was they still had those things ingrained. Now, many of you, you're like, okay, well, they should have been able to obey God because they saw the Red Sea open up, they saw the 10 plagues. But my question to you is how many times have you seen God move in your life? How many times have you seen him make a way out of no way? How many times have you seen him preserve your life? How many times have you seen him rebuke sickness and death and disease? How many times did he stop the straight bullet from coming into your direction? But yet and still there is a place where we have not given our whole heart, where we have not given our full commitment, where we have not yielded to the wholeness of what he is asking us to do. And there's still an argument as to why we got to do what God is requesting of us. Understand that he has your full desire and your best wealth, uh, wealth and best, best wholeness in mind whenever he gives you a commandment. He's not trying to take anything from you, but he's trying to get everything to you. It's the place. Well, God says, I need you to walk in your priestly position because what, where I'm about to take you into, you won't be able to govern in any other way. I can't just make you kings because if I make you kings without having a priestly framework around it, you'll be lawless. You will go into places and you will do things that are contrary to, your, to my will. But if I put in your heart and I write on the tablet of your heart and your mind the nature and the character of who I am, then all of a sudden everything you do will be hindered by the very framework of the boundaries of my word, the boundaries of my commandments, the boundaries of my spirit, the boundaries of my nature. And I will make sure that you walk in the line that will bring you into the most prosperous way for your life. Understand when God begins to sanctify us, he's sanctifying us for a purpose. It's not to strip us just to strip us. But he's stripping us because what's on us right now is too much for us to hold fast to. But he needs to bring us forward. I need to fast forward to get to a few other things and make sure we point it. Consecration has its benefits. Understand that God will robe you for the purpose and the authority that you're called to. And then he will anoint you to make sure that you have the weight of God behind you to be able to accomplish what it is that he's given you assignments for. 
We have to understand that as God is bringing us into a place, that not only is he anointing us and robing us in righteousness to make sure that we're effective, but as we consecrate, there are angels that have been assigned to our purpose. There are angels that have been assigned to our life. If you don't believe me, go and read Exodus 23, verse 20 through 26. It says here, behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him or he will not part in your transgressions for my name is in him see a lot of times we, we we back away from what scripture gives us precedent for how much more should we as those who have holy spirit and the bible says that we will judge angels we we have so many people in the body of christ even myself i was delayed and being in a place of understanding the authority that i had with the angels that were assigned to my purpose we're not talking to angels where scripturally we see it over and over again where men had conversation with, I mean whole conversations with angels. That there were the release of downloads, instructions, understanding, blueprints, all that came by the way of angelic hosts to make sure that you didn't miss your mark. See, we got to make sure that we understand that when transition is here, that we are sensitive to the transition and we do not allow there to be a lackadaisical mindset that grips us and we become delayed in our responses to the things of God. That we actually uh, do not hold fast to the access points that God gives us. Understand that if God gives you access to a thing and you choose not to use it, it becomes an accusation against you. It becomes the place that the enemy can say, see God, you trusted him with this and he has not borne fruit and your inactivity becomes a witness against you. You become a, a, a unprofitable steward over the thing that God has given you access to. We can no longer meander around the mountain actually acting as if we have the luxury of time. But when God begins to bring things into the moment where it's a Kairos moment, it is the opportunity that we have to seize and hold fast to what it is that he's breaking us into. And the thing is, I love, you don't even have to fully know and understand what he's doing. All you got to do is get on board. All you have to do is do what we did earlier and say yes. Line upon line, precept upon precept, he will make things known unto you. We cannot go into this thing thinking that I've got to know the whole pattern before I say yes. It's going to cost us something. Ah, oh, Jesus. Exodus 32, 1 through 6, write this down. This is where Aaron, because the, the nature of where he came out of, that slavery mentality was not broken, not just out of the people, but it wasn't broken out of the priests. Here Aaron was the one that was going to be manifesting the fullness of the first high priest designated by God. And when Moses is up on the mountain with God, now this is the thing that I, I, I as I read this scripture, it, it, it frustrated me and it burned inside of me because I was like, we do this all the time. Here you find that Moses was up on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible says that the fire and the cloud of smoke descended upon the mountain so that the people could see that God was in the midst of them upon the mountain talking to Moses. But what does it say? That the people got too frustrated with how long Moses was gone. And then they went to Aaron as the priest and said, make for us a God that we can worship because Moses has been gone too long, but this is the thing that jacked me up. He said, they said, Moses, the man who brought us out of Egypt, has been gone too long. But what did God tell them when he very first time he said to them, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, bore you on eagle's wings and brought you where? To myself. So here they are in the midst of a situation, in the midst of transition, God is on the mountain. They see the fire of God upon the mountain, but yet and still their eyes and their heart is back in Egypt. They are so frustrated with the fact that God is not moving in their time frame. So frustrated with the fact that he's not moving according to the way they want him to move that they begin to devise their own plans with God in the presence of them. Hear me, people of God, as we're making this transition, in your patience, do not grow impatient. 
Do not let yourself grow weary in well-doing and you begin to move ahead of God and make your own plans and make your own schemes and try to make it work according to the word of God. This sounds like the word that I received in 1985, so it looks like I need to do this and move this here and move that here. And so do you try to make the word come to pass in your own strength. You're going to miss God. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. God is ready to do something for you but he will not do it with your hands on it. Why? Because he will not share his glory with nobody. It has to be that it was the Lord's doing and it is what? Marvelous in our eyes. So God is going to test your patience. He's going to see how long you're going to wait, how long you're going to allow him to move and do things according to his timing, how he thinks and how he moves. See, they had to sacrifice their own agenda, their own perspective, their own process. This next level that God is trying to draw us into is going to require us to now consecrate at another level. Why? Because the weight of the next level will break, literally break us if we remain in the same place of consecration. Okay? What did Jesus say when it came to a whole age of people that said, okay, if I don't sleep with the woman, then I'm okay. He said, no, if you've looked at her with lust in your eyes, you've committed the act already. It was a shift in consecration that caused them to understand the moment, the appointed time that the Son of God had been released in the earth. It was a place where Jesus was saying to you, no, it's no longer that old place. But the one that you thought that was coming in another way, he's here, but he's coming with his own agenda. He's not coming to deal with Rome in that framework. No, he's coming to deal with every single kingdom that is in the earth. God is looking to consecrate, to bring us into a place where he will set apart for himself those who are godly. And hear me, Psalm 4.3 says that he will hear from you if you partake in the godliness that he's setting you apart for. I don't know about you, but I want my prayers answered. Hallelujah. Let me skip a couple of things because I got a few minutes and I want to make sure that we cover some of these other important points. As you know that God is the one who brought you into victory. As you know that there is patience in the place that you got to yield to the direction of the Lord. As you know that you got to make sure that first and foremost, your heart is right before him. And then you're praying for your leaders so that their heart can be right before God. Understand that the warfare at your leaders are greater than any warfare that you individually are facing. Why? Because it's more opportunistic. The enemy is very opportunistic. If he can hit me, if he can hit Apostle Buddy, Dr. Mary, if he can hit Pastor Ayana, if he can hit any other, other pastors, he can take out a whole heap of people with one shot. But as you're crying out in intercession, God is like, oh, not only am I coming to heal you, but I'm going to heal them and everything else that needs to be set in order. Why? Because my people will advance and the glory of my name will be revealed. Hallelujah. It's in this season that we have to be so engaged with the presence of God that it literally edges out every single, uh, 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 what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Every single crack that the enemy tries to bring in your armor, every single thing that he tries to bring as an entry place, every foothold he tries to have in your life. We have to literally be in a place that if man falls, no matter what, we're saying, God, we have committed our lives to you. I don't care who doesn't show up. I don't care who doesn't preach. I don't care who doesn't come. I don't care who doesn't go. If you say fast, Lord, I'm fasting. If they talk about me, if they ridicule me, if they say I'm being religious, whatever you want to call me, I will be that. All I need to see is the fruit of what you're doing in the midst of my life. And when I get on the other side of this thing, I will be the ones that they will call for when it's time for the hand of God to move in the midst of my situation. God is looking for a people that will take the ridicule. That will have your family members say to you, you're crazy. You're looking skinny. Why are you losing all that weight? Why are you doing all this and all doing all of that? I'm fasting. I'm before the Lord because I want to see his hand move in my life. I don't care what you got to say. Hear me. Deliverance has to be our lifestyle. I don't care what nobody say. 
You need to spin your place where you seek the next level of deliverance. Why? Because every level of authority requires another level of brokenness. And you have to have your will broken. You have to have your mind broken. You have to have every part of your being broken until it's what? Fully yielded to the will of God. To the place where he can say one thing to you and at the whisper of his voice you move. You don't need 5 million confirmations. You don't need 15 words of the Lord. You don't need a dream and a vision. All you need is the very voice and the whisper of his mouth. The Bible says he looks for those who what? Tremble at his word. Jesus Christ. See, the power of what God is doing, he will allow a rebellious generation to die off, an entire generation. Guess what? And their leaders. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, if people don't want to do the will of God, trust me, all you got to do is continue to walk with them. If you walk with them long enough, all you will find out is that God will say, oh, you stayed with me in the midst of them not doing so. So guess what? I will move them right on out of the way. I will allow them to transition on to glory, and I will bring you forth in power and in authority and let there be a move that follows you, a whole generation that immediately steps into conquering. I'm giving you Bible. This is Joshua. Understand that Moses and Aaron died before crossing over into the promised land. They had no ability to enter in. Why? Because they did not allow the full deliverance process to go forth in their lives. They allowed their hearts and their minds to still be pulled by the old system and the old ways of doing things. Moses had that anger problem, that murderous spirit that was still functioning inside of him. And in the midst of what he had as a, a new thing that God was trying to birth in him, and hear me, this is why we got to be sensitive to when God is doing a new thing. Understand the grace when you've been with him for a little bit of time is much greater than what you have when you've been with him longer. What was the greater offense? The murder of a man or the smoting of a rock? See, the smoting of a rock became greater. Why? Because Moses had to have the level of accountability of one who walked with God. So you were supposed to be at the place where I whisper a thing to you. He said, I talked to no other prophet in, in face to face like I talked to this man. I talked to him like a friend. Every other prophet I talked to in dreams, I put them asleep and visit them in their dreams. But this man I speak to face to face. And because of that relationship, because of that level of intimacy, the leash was much smaller. And in smoting a rock, it was the birthing of another technology. What do I mean? There was not a place where a man could speak to an inanimate object and cause something to come out of it that was never supposed to be. <sighs> Hear me. What was the source of water that was coming out of that rock? It was the living water that was coming out of Moses and the word of God that was pouring forth. And he spoke a technology into something that was in the framework of earth that had never seen heaven. But God let the word of his mouth come forth. And out of that was supposed to be the living water that would cause the people to never thirst again. To flow out of that rock by the power of a command that he could prove that he was God. But because he used old technology in a new season, it cost him everything. How many of us are going to have to go back to the drawing board and cry out to God for what the technology is for now? No longer will you be able to use that old system of how you approach God, but God is about to turn the table on how we engage with him, and he's about to make us dependent upon him in ways that we've never been before. I know you're saying, yes, we got the word, and I truly believe the word that came forth last week by, from Prophet Blake that we're stepping into this place where the abundance of God is about to flow in, but abundance has responsibility there is an accountability that comes to those who handle the abundance that thing is going to require another level where we're broken enough that he can trust us with what he wants to bring Joshua 3 5 says sanctify yourself why because for tomorrow the Lord shall do wonders among you hear me life in a family sanctify yourself because there is a tomorrow that's coming. That God is about to do great and mighty things in the midst of us. And they shall be wondrous. It's going to astonish many. Because you're going to look up and you're going to say, wait a minute. We were here just a few months ago. And God is going to accomplish things in months that took us years to do in prior seasons. 
He's going to cause you to be expedited in your ability, upgraded in your authority. And you have technologies from heaven that are going to be blueprints and downloads. And we will build as master builders. But you cannot do it if your heart is not clean and your hands are not pure. Hands are not pure. Switch. <laughs> hands are not clean and your heart is not pure. Amen. God is trying to upgrade us in what he's doing. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to pick this up in two weeks. Amen. But I want to bring this point to you. 2 Samuel. The Bible says that Eli's sons, he didn't allow them to repent. He didn't allow them to repent because there was so much wickedness and wretchedness while operating inside of them because they mishandled the precious things of God. Hear me, there is a, a, a cry that's coming out of the heart of God looking for a people that will learn what it is to seek something that's precious to him. And I'm going to mess y'all up because he messed me up with it. The thing that's most precious to him is souls. It's souls. I don't care what anybody has to say. He bought literally every soul by the power of his blood. And every time you mishandle a person, every time you talk contrary to who they are, you are taking the precious things of God and treating it as if it is something that can be cast aside. And there is accountability that's coming to it. Hear me. He said, I, I, I would not allow them to repent because I wanted to kill them. Why? Because they profaned the name of the Lord so greatly that God said, you know what? I found your replacement. This is the thing I love. He took Samuel. Samuel was a child. And if you go back and you study the order of priests and how they function and they operated, their garments were literally crafted by the mind of God to the point that they became a weapon in and of themselves. What do I mean? Aaron could not die until he was derobed. Scripture literally says that Aaron was stripped of his garments and he went home to be with his fathers. That the garment became a weapon. But hear this. It doesn't say that the high priest made Samuel's garment. It said his mother brought his garment. Every year, she made a linen ephod for him. Oh, God. I don't know who that is for, but there is a mother that's been crying out for their babies. Understand that God is releasing technologies to you in this season that you will be able to craft for your children the very order in which they are to operate in. And as you dress them with the word of God, as you dress them with the order in which they are to function in, as you dress them with the very proclamations of my word over their lives, says the Lord, I am going to put them in strategic places and I am going to grow them by my hand and by my spirit. The Bible says that Samuel grew in favor and in stature with God. God and with man. Who else did this speak about that does that? Jesus. God made it his point to honor the young priest that was walking in holiness while the older priest couldn't do it. What does scripture say? Don't let people get on you about your youth. Don't let people look down upon you because you hadn't been here for as long as they have. Understand, God will be working in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure so that he can fill vacancies in the realm of the spirit to make sure that everything he wants to accomplish, he mandates and causes there to be people who are able to handle the technology. Understand that Hophni and Phinehas couldn't handle the weight of glory that was entering into Israel by the hands of Samuel, by the words that were coming out of his mouth. There had to be a whole new breed of individual that was raised up so that Samuel could speak what needed to come from heaven. The Bible says that there was peace all throughout Israel throughout the time that Samuel operated as a judge. Do you understand? To the point where they feared Samuel. Do you come in peace or do you come in war? Why? Because as a prophet I come under the authority of the God that sent me. But hear me. And I'm Two weeks from now, I get to the rest of this. Hallelujah. 
we put more weight on things that we shouldn't have put weight on. Because we're going to rule and to reign as kings and priests, not as prophets, not as apostles, not as pastors, not as teachers, not as evangelists. And I know I'm giving you a teaser. But understand, as we step into this further, we're going to understand how to get unstuck from systems that have caused us to miss the fullness of what he has ordained for us to be from the very foundations of the earth. The priesthood is something that's so great and so beyond what we've given it language for. And God is trying to peel open technologies to understand that if we function in what he's called us to be and the priesthood is the foundation, there is nothing. This is what scripture says, I will withhold no good thing from them that walk uprightly. Understand that the priesthood gives you open access to the full blanket of what heaven has to offer. Every power, every anointing, every grace, every weight, everything that hasn't even been revealed. Because what the Bible says is that it has not entered into the hearts of mere men what the Lord will do for you. Understand when we're stepping into the hour where God is about to fold out the framework of heaven into the earth. He's about to birth a people that cannot and will not be denied. The place that the enemy will have to cower and wait for those who are manifesting the power of the age to come. This is the hour that we are raising up priests. Stand to your feet. Hands lifted all over this room. Father, we repent right now. For, Lord, not giving our full heart unto you. We repent, Father, for picking up every other agenda as opposed to the priesthood of God. Father, for not realizing that you have beckoned us unto yourself. You brought us out of the bondage. You found us. Father, when we were drowning in our own blood, you found us. In the midst of our sin and degradation, you found us. In the midst of our hardship, you found us. In the midst of our generational curses, you found us. In the midst of where we were, Lord God, and you drew us out of bondage, out of slavery, and you brought us unto yourself. Father, forgive us for the places that we forgot, that it was by your mighty hand and your outstretched arm that you brought us out. It was nothing that we did of our own accord. It was nothing. Father, we thank you for the men and women that you used, but it was you, Lord God, behind it all from the beginning. So God, we repent. We turn our hearts back to you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God, we commit unto you again. Father, we tear down idols in high places, things that we exalted, Lord God, above the knowledge of who you are. We trample them underfoot, Lord God, and we recommit, Lord God, to being your priest in the earth. We recommit, Lord God, to picking up your agenda. We recommit, Lord God, for seeking the delight of the Lord, for making your delight our very preeminent, Lord God, focus that Lord you are Lord God our prize we will not allow Lord God anything else of this world to be our prize but father we choose to shift you're bringing us into the place that you're about to birth in us afresh a season that we have not seen before a people that we have never been before hallelujah a technology, Lord God, that has never been released. Lord God, we thank you for these uncommon times that's about to hit the life center. God, we say walk through this place and do what you desire. Shake what can be shaken until what's unshaken remains. Father, move in power and might. Do it according to your will and your word. Let no man get the glory out of it. But Father, receive your glory. Receive it out of each person. Receive it out of each life. Receive it out of each soul. And Father, make us ready to handle your most precious gifts. That we will have, Lord God, the right mindset to enter into this sacred. This sacred positioning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because the fullness of the priesthood is maturity and sonship. So God, we say mature us today. Make us, Lord God, hallelujah, mature sons, for you've decreed by your word as many who are led by the Spirit of God as them that are called the sons of God. We say make us sons today, God. Yes, Lord. 
take our eyes off of flesh. We fix our eyes upon you. Hey, my shade to Rabansi. Yes, Lord, I thank you for the weight that is in this room, in this moment. The seriousness of what you're doing. Hallelujah. For every person that has been running from their call, come down to this altar. Every person that has been running from the place that you know that the Father has called you into. This is the hour of surrender. This is the hour of surrender. You've been running, trying to figure it out in your own strength. The Lord says, commit to me today. Surrender. Yeah. Surrender. 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 Surrender, 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 surrender. Yield. Your life depends on it. Yield. Surrender. Surrender. Bow your will to his. Yes, God. Father, we yield. We yield. We yield. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. We take every condition off the table. Everything that we put before you as a fleece, Lord God, we take it off the table. God, we choose to trust you, Lord God, with our whole heart. We yield, Father, completely to your will for our lives. Have your way in the midst of us, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This place of brokenness is about to crack open the heavens for you. Deliverance is going to flow like a river out of this place of brokenness. Hey, yes, God. Chains of stagnation are shattering in the midst of your brokenness. Toman Shaya. your yes in this moment to this next level of consecration this next level of purity the Bible decrees blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God there is a place where scales are going to fall off of your eyes that the heavens are going to be open over you and clarity is going to be poured out in a way that you have never understood it. Things that have been an enigma to you will now begin to align and you will understand the pattern as the God begins to decode what he's been trying to download to you. For the last 10 years, the framework of heaven's blueprint for your life is being poured out. Hey, shed on Sia. What about the other Bocosi and the Bekeshi and the Bocoso? Reveal yourself, oh God. Hallelujah. Sure, people sanctify themselves. Hey, for some of you, it's going to be a literal three days. Hey, Shantanana Mando Horebe Sianda. The Lord is going to come and walk in the midst of your house. He's going to come and walk in the midst of your job. He's going to come and walk in the midst of your family situation. He's going to come and walk in the midst of what's on paper as a divorce. He's going to come and walk in the midst of fragmented pieces. He's going to speak clarity. Many of you have been afraid to pull the trigger. 
several actions because you feared the uncharted place, the way that you have not been before. The Lord is releasing not only courage, but he's releasing strength to you. That as this clarity comes and the heavens are open, your eyes see, you will know the way that you are to take. Yes, God. Yes, God. Father, sanctify. Let your fire burn. Let the consuming fire of the all-living God begin to burn in this place father i thank you for excuses being burnt up i thank you for lies being consumed in your holy fire i thank you lord god for things that have been spoken as word curses being completely eradicated that you're burning up all wood hay and stubble we thank you that you're purifying lord god the precious metals the gold the silver father the precious stones that remain father as what you have crafted as the royal diadem that you have made your people to be we thank you father that in the hands of the master craftsman you cause beauty to come out of ashes we decree lord god that the fire of god will begin to burn lord god that there may be beauty for ashes 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 power of grief is broken over the last season god is pulling you out the bonds of your Egypt. Hey, calling you to the meeting place of Mount Sinai, the hill of the Lord. The question is, will you prepare yourself for your ascension? Shay, Bakandia, prepare, 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 prepare. The hour of ascension is among us. For the Lord shall descend and we shall ascend and meet him in our place that's higher than where we are now. So the cry is, come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. Elevate your thought process. Elevate. Hey, Your time in the word. Elevate. Your prayer. Elevate. Your time in my presence. Elevate. 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 Father, we thank you for what you're doing. For the uncommon time that has come to this house. Build for yourself a people that will be for your pleasure a special people hey a royal priesthood a holy nation of those who walk according to your ways we thank you father for your hand in the midst of this we give you glory for we have not yet witnessed the greatness of what you have in store for this place. We give you praise. We thank you for our new beginning. We thank you for our divine reset. We thank you, Father, for the place that you pick us up and you plant us in a brand new season. Hey, Sheran Sumariandea. The only way that you don't shift in this is if you choose not to obey the word of the Lord. But the shift has been guaranteed for the entire people. Shame. I'm talking about a level of authority in God. Whew. That literally this house will be known. I literally hear the Lord saying that I'm going to change DNA. No, no. I, I'm going to give you this testimony. 
There's a woman of God in California who died and was resurrected. And when she was resurrected, prior to her time of being resurrected, she did a stress test. She was 65 plus, had cardiovascular disease, all of this. She went back after the fact so that they could do tests on her. Not only was she healthy, but the test said that her organs were 20 years younger than what they were. She's over 60. The doctor said, I'm not supposed to say this to you, but you have a live egg in your ovary and your husband can impregnate you if you're not careful. Hear me. The only thing that is limited in the presence of God is your belief system. All things are possible to them that believe. There is a power that will regenerate you and make sure that you do not grow old. Hear me. We're sitting here fighting over people getting healed. That's a minuscule thing in the eyes of God. But taking your body that is 75 years old and making you look like you're 35, now that's a whole nother thing. But it is the framework of heaven and what he desires to do. Father, open the heavens over this house. Enlarge our belief system. Enlarge our faith capacity. Enlarge our understanding of you. Let the heavens, Lord God, be open unto us and let the framework of what you desire to birth, Father, be made known. Let the tapestry be fabricated inside of us right on the tablet of our hearts and our minds. What needs to come to this region, what needs to come to this nation, what needs to be born in the earth that you have been waiting for people who would be willing to pay the price. Make us ready and we enter in wholeheartedly in Jesus' name, if you believe what he's doing in your life, give him a glorious praise.